Do you get on board with what Reggie Wayne had to say comparing Matt Ryan to Peyton Manning, or should he and we slow our roll? I, I'm going to get on board, all right? I'm going to get on board with this. I am. And now, Peyton Manning is the poster child for getting team offense checks, everybody on the same page. So he's like the god of that. We know that. But, I mean, by all accounts, from what I've heard out of Atlanta the last few years, seeing Arthur Smith at the Combine and Dave Ragone, the offensive coordinator, that's all. They, they that's the, the thing that they couldn't stop talking about with Matt Ryan. Can't believe at this point of his career how driven, how detailed he is, you know, how all over, how hard he works every day. So, yes, he's bringing that type of element to that organization. Now, is it Peyton Manning level? Listen, that's a special level. We know that. But I think they're getting big time franchise, quarterback, detail, watch over everybody, communication type of attitude for Matt Ryan. That's for sure. Well, and part of the conversation I had yesterday with George Payton, yeah. Broncos GM, because he described Russell Wilson as a winner back in March when he was introduced. And, you know, that that's that's a trigger word for some people who are in the media. Oh, quarterback wins aren't a sta a good quarterback brings a winning culture a winning attitude yeah. elevates everyone walks through the door and he's different everyone senses it everyone is minding their p's and q's a little more closely as you'll say from time to time everyone is on notice the sheriff is here russell wilson is different than what they've had at quarterback ever since the sheriff walked away after Super Bowl 50. And I think with Matt Ryan, it's kind of low-key and understated. Yeah. And I think we just take Matt Ryan for granted. The Agreed. guy was the MVP of the National Football mm -hmm. League in 2016. The Falcons have been competitive more often than not during his time there, but they only made it to one Super Bowl, and they were on the wrong side of 28-3. to So there's never been a full embrace of Matt Ryan the way there has been of Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, right. Russell Wilson. Yeah. And I think the difference is the pelt on the horse or the wall or both. You get a Super Bowl win, you are viewed differently. You're just viewed differently. And he never got that Super Bowl win, so he's not viewed in that same category as those guys. But, you know, I we're not that he's going to win the Super Bowl this year, but I, I I can understand where Reggie Wayne's coming from. He's not Peyton right, Manning because right. he doesn't have the accomplishments. But the demeanor, yeah. the expectations, right. what he holds himself to and yeah. therefore can hold. If you hold yourself to a high standard, you're allowed to hold the people around you to a high standard. Because I'm holding myself to the high standard. I expect everybody to be. That attitude is what elevates the program, and that, that may help the Colts tremendously because it's not like they suck. You're taking a team that's already pretty good and maybe giving it the kick in the ass that it needs at the most important position on the field. Definitely. I almost feel like you're getting the best of, like, with Matt and Ryan, it's like you're getting the best of, like, the last two years of Phillip Rivers and Carson Wentz. It's going to be all, you know, in one guy here, finally, with everything you need there. Yeah, it's not It's not going to be like, oh, wow, lasers all over the field, but he can make every throw on the field. He's got great feel and timing and anticipation and all that. He's next level. His athleticism is better than people give him credit for, to, to your point there, without a doubt. I mean, again, this is a guy that's, you know, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame-ish type quarterback. There's going to be, I think, a pretty good discussion about Matt Ryan when all said and done. And, yeah, the I think the Super Bowl certainly hurts that. Lost a few playoff games where I think most people would go, oh, they were kind of the better team and they lost. That So that doesn't look good on him but certainly one of the great quarterbacks of our era and one of the great professionals and dissectors of a defense. I mean, he is a guy you think of when you just go, whoa, making decisions, getting the ball out of the hands, getting the ball in the right spot, all of that type of stuff. Matt Ryan is really damn good, and you're right. He's kept them competitive with really, like, still, last year, I'm going to say it again, a crappy team in Atlanta. Like, really well coached and awesome quarterback play made us think, ooh, they're kind of a playoff contender, and they really weren't. Next up, Raheem Blackshear, undrafted Whoa. free agent signed by the Buffalo Bills. Virginia Tech running back. He said, I look at myself as like Adebo Samuel. And the stats back it up. He had 1,912 
rushing yards, 14 touchdowns, but also 1,213 receiving yards and seven receiving touchdowns in 50 college games. Now, obviously, Debo Samuel is a receiver who became running back. I could see where a running back would want to become receiver because that position pays better in the NFL. Does Raheem Blackshear need to slow his role, or do you get on board with the idea that he could be a dual threat in the NFL like Debo Samuel? Well, I, I got to watch this guy a little bit. I can't say that I studied him coming out in the draft process. I'm sorry about that. I mean, that, I'm, I'm going to say, like, what, what are we saying here? Slow your role? How dare you? Yeah, I'm going to say, dare you? I'm slowing your role. How dare you not study 400 guys? I know, I know. I only went a little over 200, ultimately, when it was all said and done. But, yes, I did not. I did not. And... I'm just going to say slow your roll. No disrespect to Mr. Blackshear and the fact that you didn't get drafted. I don't really know you. And Debo Samuel is arguably the best non-quarterback in football on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, so that I can't – I got to say slow your roll down. That, that one's a little too abrupt of a, uh, you know, compliment of the thyself there a little bit for me to buy, buy into that one. Yeah, look, and I got no problem with confidence. You have to be confident to the point of delusion or to succeed in the NFL or to succeed at a high level in anything. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. One way to find out. First, you got to make the team. You're, you're one of the 90. Get to one of the 53. Get to one of the 48 on game day. Get on the field and show us what you can do. And the reality is he's going to have to grind away. He's going to have to make his mark on special teams. Then he earns an opportunity to show what he can do. But, hey, the, the Bills could use a Debo Samuel. So, yeah, go, go, become, go become Debo Samuel. But meanwhile, we'll, we'll focus on Debo Samuel until you become. When you <laughs> yes. become Debo Samuel, we'll focus on you. For now, we'll focus on Debo Samuel. Let's focus uh, briefly on Jesse Bates. Here's Mike Hilton from the Cincinnati Bengals talking about the franchise-tagged safety who is not at off-season workouts. Yeah, we've been talking all offseason. Um, you know, everybody in that locker room wants Jesse to, to get what he deserves. And we, we know as a team, he, he's one of the most – he's a cornerstone piece of this franchise. So, on my end, I'm going to do what I can do to keep pushing and, you know, just putting it out there for him to for him to sign long term. You know, if it happens, great. But also, everybody knows the business side of the NFL. And nobody would be upset or – you know, pissed off at him if he didn't show up or he ended up going somewhere else. It's just just part of the game, but he knows that everybody in this locker room wants him here. Absolutely positively I get on board with this. Look, he's a franchise tag player. He hasn't signed his tender. You're not going to show up for the workouts until you sign the tender. You're exerting your leverage under the CBA. They have restricted you from getting to the open market, even though you've got your four years in and your contract expired. They've used the franchise tag to keep you from getting paid on the open market. Your response in this ping pong match under the franchise tag is to say, I'm not showing up yeah, right. until I get a long-term contract. I'm not. I'm not going to be there. I'm withholding services. So I got no problem with it all. I got no problem with what Hilton said. They get it. They understand it. And even if he has to go somewhere else to get what he deserves, they're fine with it. Football players have changed in that regard. They understand they understand that you have limited opportunities to get paid, and if you're not going to get paid what you deserve here, God love you, go get it somewhere else. I'd rather not cross paths with you on a football field elsewhere. You're my teammate. You're my friend, but go do what you have to do. That's right. That's, you know, it's the modern-day athlete. It's the modern-day business world and sports. That's the, what it is. I mean, again, it's, it's – and don't get mad at the players. We, we, nobody talks about this more than you and me. I mean, don't get mad at them. They didn't make this a business. This is the way that it is. This is one of the few avenues they have to fight back. I mean, I'm on board with this all the way from every aspect, whether it's Jesse Bates doing what he's got to do or buying in that the team – supports him yes they do the locker room supports him the coaches support him there's not going to be anybody there that's not going to understand his situation and you know like we talked about who was at the team yesterday that we were talking about where we want them to get paid right what was that we want these guys to get paid you know most organizations are like that you know, they want their guys to be paid you know, there's the human element of that you now you know we know it's a business and there's some front office guys that are certainly gonna you know pinch pennies and do all that but Nobody's going to be holding it personal against him that, oh, man, I can't believe you're not here after the Super Bowl or anything like that. I'm going to be interested to see where this goes because it just feels like it's been going on forever here. And then here's the other thing, too, Mike. I mean, because he's a really damn good player. They drafted a guy in the first round, Daxton Hill, out of Michigan, who my comparison was Jesse Bates. I really thought he was Jesse Bates. You know, So I would love to see him on the field with Bates and Von Bell or whatever else, but – 
You know, maybe if something doesn't get done, he's more looked at as the replacement for Jesse Bates if they try to trade him or move him or whatever. Can't pay everyone, and if you're going to be a good team, there's going to be a lot of guys who are in line to get paid. You're going to have to make some tough decisions about who stays and who goes. Last one very quickly. Yeah. Robert Griffin III mm. participated in the Rich Eyes and Charity event, the 40-yard dash, run, rich, run, support St. Jude Children's Hospital. Griffin ran a 448, unofficial 448. He claims that he heard from teams after he ran the 448. Do you get on board or do you slow your roll with that contention that the phone rang after RG3 ran a 448 with teams interested in him? I'm going to get on board with it. I am. I mean, the fact that he did it, you know, that publicly and everybody could see it, I, I could imagine a team calling maybe his agent, just going, like, where's he at? Uh, I'll get on board with it. I will. I mean, it's impressive. I'm one that still sits here and goes, I'm not sure why Robert Griffin III retired. I really don't even know why. I mean, his, he didn't retire. He well, didn't retire. Nobody wanted him I last feel like year. he kind of just, like, didn't really pursue it, though. Door's been open. Door's open. It was open door's even been for open. Him? He's made it clear. He's made it clear the door's open. Wow, I'm That's really, why I'm skeptical. I'm surprised. I choose to be skeptical. Yeah. Okay. I choose to be skeptical. He has a history Okay, it's to great that, that he ran a 448. Yeah, right. It's great. It's great that he ran a 448. Yeah, well, he was going to write the, the tell-all book about his experience in Washington, and he pulled the plug on that. So, And then he's, he knows he knows certain things that he's holding back for the book that would be highly relevant, apparently, to this ongoing Washington Commanders investigation. That rubbed me the wrong way when he was trying to play that game, and then all of a sudden the book disappears. But – Look, his speed was never an issue. No. it's not. That's not the issue. The issue is his durability, decision-making that causes him to get injured, and just was he good enough as a quarterback? He, he would still be in the NFL. He's, well, he's 32 years old. He'd still be in the NFL. I, so yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I, I choose to be skeptical about this because him running a 4-4-8, it's not like, well, you know, if, if, if Robert Griffin could just run a sub-4-5, we'd sign him. I don't think that's what's keeping teams from signing him. I don't. No, and look, I don't think so we're already We're already five days removed from it. You can bring a guy in for a workout anytime you want. You can say, well, he's moving pretty good there. They say 4-4-8, but you know how these things go. Yeah. Let's bring him in. Let's, so let's put him yeah. on our clock. Right, let's see right. how fast he runs. Let's see what he does throwing the ball. Let's see what he can do. Let's bring him in. We're here. We're here. It's phase two now of the offseason program. Let's see what he can do. I think that that if it, 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 it's just like it's kind of, it's 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 not exactly like Colin Kaepernick, but the idea is there's an easy way for a team to address any questions it has. Bring him in. And there's no stigma. There's no business issue. There's no, no problem not. that gets attached to bringing in RG3. No, there's not. I I know. I'm, I'm, I'm I, you know, I don't know why. I mean, I said that too earlier on just because I felt like early on in last offseason – it was like out there that he was going to be a part of ESPN to where I wanted to be like, it didn't seem like he really pursued trying to be somebody's backup or anything that way. Um, so maybe that's where I'm wrong altogether, but yeah, Mike, I, I, I hear you. That could go both ways. Certainly, certainly. And uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not totally on board with my get on board, but I'll go with get on board for this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.